Today we're conducting a scientific experiment. Do you need to mash grains for 60 minutes? Or is that just what they want you to think? Who is they? I mean, who's they? The government? Big corporations? Oh no. Alright, let's do this. Yeah, how long do you really need to mash? If you don't need to mash for an hour and it only takes 10 minutes, we'll find out. You can save almost an hour on your brew day. To do this, I'm going to take a specific gravity measurement every 10 minutes for 60 minutes using a mash temp hydrometer. So that means as soon as I get this grain in, I'm going to set a timer. That means I need my phone. We're going to do a single crush width of a credit card. That's what we're doing grain-wise. Okay, grains are in. Starting my timer for 60 minutes. Since we're not going to take our first measurement for 10 minutes, I'm going to make sure there's no dough balls in here because I don't want that to impact the readings at all. Don't need this anymore. Okay, so now, as I've spent a stupid amount of money for this experiment on these, which are mash temp hydrometers. These are calibrated to measure specific gravity at 155 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what I am mashing at. And that means that I can take a sample of this, pop this in, and I know exactly what the gravity is. I bought this because I was thinking, well, if I take a sample out and then I let it cool down to typical temp is like 60 degrees and take the reading then, um, it's going to be off because during the time that it cools down, the process is still happening, the mash process. So I'm not sure that we need two since they're so freaking expensive and I've already dropped one on the ground, I'm just going to put this away. I'm not the right person for this job. This is not my strong suit. Shiny object, bright light, something's going to distract me, I know. All right, so let me explain a couple other things. 11 pounds of Maris Otter, 7.3 gallons of water. That should yield about 5.5% ABV. We would expect at 70% efficiency, 1048 or 1.048 specific gravity at the end of the mash. So that's ultimately what we're shooting for. 10 minutes, first sample. Yeah! Good thing I got that glove. So I'm gonna say it's 10.36. 10.36. So we don't, um, you know, change the volume at all. Dumping it back in. Twenty minutes specific gravity sample right here. Oh crap. Oh no, the bottom dropped off. Oh crap. Oh, <laughs> I told you I was not the guy for this job. Oh geez. Kidding me? I'm gonna say that's uh, 1045. I'll see if it goes, I feel like there's a chance it could go up a little bit more. Dude, this is all in, in the name of science, Nathaniel. I'm doing this so you don't have to. So if our target's 1048 or 1045 already, it? it means the mash literally happened almost completely in like 20 minutes. 30 minutes, let's do it. Have I figured out how to do this yet? Yes! Oh yeah, now nah, we're getting her done. Four, six, yeah, so it was worth 1046. Easy 1046. We're looking for 1048. Pretty much it happened in 20 minutes. And in 10 more minutes, nothing happened. So I would say 20 minutes might be pushing it. 30 minutes might be the sure bet. 60 minutes could just be like way overkill. Here's where you might go wrong doing a 30 minute mash. Different grains have different levels of what's called diastatic power. So diastatic power is the ability of a grain to turn starch into sugar. So that's why you're always, you know, you have a base malt and then you're mixing in other malts on top. 
the, the base malt is actually what's gonna turn the starch in the specialty malts into sugar. So it might take longer for other grain bowls. 40 minute specific gravity reading. Sample, we can collect it right now. See man, I figured it out. I'm wrong, I'm gonna say two, four, six. This is a little bit higher. I'm gonna say that's 1049, dude. I'm gonna say that's 1049. We went over by uh, 0 0.001, 1049. What do you know? I was gonna cut it off here, but let's go. Let's keep it, let's keep it rolling. This is why you science. People used to think that when they heard big rumbling noises from the sky, it was just God bowling. Then they did some science experiments and determined that was not the case. And that's why we're doing this right here. Debunking the big myths. Not to be lazy to remember it is. Probably more that, yeah. Are you shocked by your findings so far? Um, I kind of expected that maybe 20 minutes and it would be like done. I didn't expect to see a big jump from 30 to 40. It could have been measurement error on like between, yeah, at the 30 minute. But still, it's definitely still moving. Like 40 was definitely higher than the 30. If it's the same on this one, um, I think then we'll just cut it and do a mash out and move on. But if it goes up again, we'll just keep it rolling, man. See how far we can take this crazy experiment. All right, 50 minutes. Ooh, a little much on that one. It's okay, it makes it a little easier to read. It's has not moved. So this one definitely the same as the last. It's like 1049. Now that it's clear that this is completely finished at 50 minutes, in fact it was finished at 40 minutes, I'm going to bump it up to 170. We'll do a mash out. That might extract a little bit more of the sugars and we'll see if it changes. So at 170 degrees, the, the grain's just essentially, it's gonna get a little bit more mushy. And if, you know, any kind of sugar that's kind of clinging on there to the grains will hopefully kind of just flick away. And um, I'm not a scientist, man. All I know is 170 mash out should get a little bit better efficiency. Okay, 170. It's getting real hot. Not trying to burn myself, the host is getting hot. Here's what happened. The temps increased 15 degrees. The gravity that I've measured here actually went down. I looked at it and now it's down to 1044. However, that's because the temperature is different than what this um, hydrometer is calibrated to. So I actually have to plug this into a temp correction um, calculator. So gravity I've measured is 1044. Temperature of this is 170. This is calibrated to 155. I've entered all that in here. It's saying the corrected specific gravity is 1049. Uh, mash out didn't seem to do anything. So as you can see, nothing, not much had happened by 10 minutes, and then boom, huge change uh, between there and 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, there was like less than 0 0.005 of specific gravity change in the measurement. So based on what I've read, um, on the interwebs and based on this experiment, I feel like you could get away with 30 minute mash. It looks like it's gonna change things a little bit slightly because the numbers are a little bit different, but I wonder if you or anybody would ever even notice. So yeah, based on this, 30 minute mashes might be the new standard here at Clawhammer. If you like this, check out some of these other videos we've done. Done lots of brew days, done lots of experiments. You probably like them if you like this video.